an example of how to serve. And we want to continue to talk about that. Let's go there. I want to read verses 4 and 5. We know the story, as we read it last week, that was at the Passover meal. And Jesus, Passover feast, or before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his time was near. He knew his time was coming near. And this was one of the last lessons or teaching and demonstration that he gave to his disciples that was so important on serving and humility. If, if all that he taught them, he wanted to make sure that they got this one on serving and humility. And we know the story how Jesus, the disciples had been disputing on who was going to be the greatest. You know, they all was arguing and who was going to be the greatest? Who was going to be the greatest? You know, they was looking at positions. They just knew that Jesus was coming to overthrow the Roman government and they were going to have a position in Jesus' government. So they, was, they, they want to know who, who, and, 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 and James and John even argued and asked Jesus, can we sit on the right hand or your left hand? You know, they were they, seeking positions. So after all the disputing, Jesus taught them many things. So he decided I have to demonstrate to them what serving is all about. You know, I have to demonstrate. We talked in the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. You know, I'm returning there. Who was there last week in Mark chapter 9. And it gives you the scriptures of, of the disciples disputing with one another on who will be the greatest. You know, and, and, and they became even jealous of one another because because they didn't, there was, some was asking Jesus about it and the other ones were getting, you know, jealous over that because they wanted to be the greatest. And as I said last week, we all want to be great, don't we? But Jesus was teaching his disciples as a way to be great. And in the verse 4, I read verse 4 and verse 5 in John 13. So it says, as they had their meal, so he got up from the meal. Jesus got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet. Drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you will speak to us on serving, the importance of serving, and how to serve with the right attitude, how to serve in humility. So we thank you right now that you challenge our thinking, the world's way of being great, and what it means, Jesus' way, to be great. So we just thank you right now that you will speak to us in such a powerful way. Because there's so much to be done. So much to be done in the earth. And we have a set amount of time to get it done. So we just thank you right now, Father, that you'll speak to us even the more on serving. Just like you spoke to your disciples. Speak to us in an awesome and mighty way. We open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to hear what you will have to say through the reading of your word and the revelation of your word. We open our ears for you to speak and that we will receive what you have to say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus was taught his disciples how to serve. You know, Jesus demonstrated and taught his disciples a lesson on serving and humility before his death, as we read the scriptures here in John 13. Jesus' teaching and demonstration on serving was contrary to popular belief during that time. The world believes that greatness is when others serve you and you have dominion over people. That's how the world sees greatness. The world's view of greatness is power. Many people are seeking power. Many of our politicians are seeking power. You know, because that's a sign of greatness. So the world's view of greatness is power, fame, recognition. You know, we don't serve to be recognized. Amen? But we serve because we are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. But many want to be recognized. And there's times if you don't recognize people sometimes, they get upset. I've seen times when we, I was in church and they had events going on and somebody would stand up and begin to recognize people for what they've done and they happened to leave one person off that didn't get their name recognized. And they get an attitude and, 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 and get mad and, 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 and want to leave the church 
because the announcer failed to recognize their name. That's why many times we, when people get up to, to uh, recognize folks, they'll say, well, I don't want to call people by name because I might miss somebody. Why do you think people do that? Because folks get upset if you don't call their name or recognize what they done. But Jesus' view of serving and humility was totally different from the world's view. The world looks at greatness as influence over people, authority, positions, and even wealth. But Jesus' teaching opposed that view. And he taught that greatness is serving others rather than others serving you. So the disciples at that time didn't really get it. So he had to kind of demonstrate to them by putting the towel around him that maybe they can get a visual picture of what serving is all about. I mean, he taught them and he was teaching them. And, and in Matthew 20 and 28, Jesus even told them, he said, just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus taught them this lesson that, 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 that the son did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. But for some reason the disciple just wasn't getting it. So Jesus had to demonstrate it to them what serving was. What serving was. And as I did last week, get that for me if you don't mind, please. Jesus had to take off his outer garment. He took off his outer garment. And he had to give them a visual so they could really see what serving is, is all about. Y'all want me to wash your feet today? Never mind. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. But Jesus illustrated this point. He took off his, his, his outer garment. I ate a big breakfast this morning, so I hope it goes around. <laughs> Jesus illustrated this point to them. He put a towel around them. So maybe they can get the visual picture of, of, of what serving is, is, is all about. And he got a basin and he filled it with water and he kneeled down as I demonstrated last week. He kneeled down and he began to wash his disciples' feet. Even Judah's feet as we discussed last week of the twelve. He began to serve them and he and he began to teach them and give them a visual that this is what serving is all about. Now keep in mind, keep in mind that Jesus is the son of the living God. Keep in mind that, that, that Jesus was God in the flesh. Okay? Keep in mind what he done to serve mankind. Think of that he, he didn't exhort himself, but he humbled himself to man to serve them. So he wanted them to get a picture if Jesus can do this. If I, Jesus said, if I can, can kneel down and, and, and wash your feet, you ought to take this as an example. Because this is what serving is. That was a great lesson on humility. Jesus serving. It's, it's like you are the, the president or the GE or CEO of a, of a major Fortune 500 company. You, you're, the big, you're the big person, okay? And you come down and, 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 and you get with the janitor crew and you clean the bathrooms of the building. Wouldn't that be a great example of humility and serving? But you own the, 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 the business. Well, J Jesus created the world. He created the world. When you look at the book of John and the book of Colossians, he said that all things was created by him. So here we see a picture of Jesus here, the creator of the heavens, which is much more bigger than a CEO for, for, for a Fortune 500 company. Here's the creator of the world. Heavens and the earth, mankind, and every living creature that exists, the creator himself put on a towel and he kneeled down and he washed his disciples' feet as a, as a, for them to observe but they didn't get the teaching so he had to say I, I gotta just demonstrate this that, that, that maybe they will get it if I just demonstrate it to them Peter of course had an issue with it 
He didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. But he, he knew that Jesus was, that, that was stupid low for him to wash feet were dirty. Like we said, they walked in the desert and, and, and their feet were dirty. You know, that was a dirty job. But Jesus didn't, Peter didn't understand, why Jesus, you washing my feet? And Jesus had to explain to him and say, you don't understand it now, but you will understand that he humbled himself that low to wash the disciples' feet. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator of heaven and earth, the God, the great I Am, kneeled down and he washed his disciples' feet. And even the one named Judas, he still washed his feet. He even demonstrated you gotta serve people, like I said last week, he have to serve people that you necessarily may not want to serve. But Jesus had no respect of person. He washed Judas' feet like he washed the rest of them, knowing that Judas was going to, to betray him. So Jesus said, if you want to be great, you got to be a servant. He said he came in Matthew 20 28. He came and gave his life as a ransom for many. We know what a ransom is. A ransom means to exchange something in place of, to become a substitute for many. True greatness was demonstrated by Christ in three supreme acts that he demonstrated humility and serving. The first act was Jesus coming to earth. As I said, he was God. First of all, he came to earth and he humbled himself. And Jesus would teach a lesson and he would say, those who, who exhort themselves will be humbled. And those who humbled themselves will be what? Exalted. So Jesus here, uh, first act, the supreme act of demonstrating humility and serving was the act of coming down to earth. As we read the scriptures, in the beginning was God, the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. And the word became flesh and it dwelt among us here on earth. So we got to understand this, that, 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 that Jesus stood to the lowest level. Man was made from the dust of the earth. Man was made from the earth that God had created. And Jesus came in the form of a human. Yet we know he was 100% divine, but yet he was 100% human. And he came to the lowest level, man who was created from the dust of the earth. And Jesus humbled himself to that level. What a great demonstration of humility. Yes. Humility. We, we, we want to be great, but Jesus was teaching, hey, to be great, you got to humble yourself. If you exalt yourself, you will be humble. But if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. That's what Jesus was teaching his disciples. And he began to teach them. And, and his first act was the act of coming to earth. He humbled himself. And later he would be exalted. The second act was, was that the act of serving. Jesus, normally he told people, he said, want to follow him. He said, the son of man don't have anywhere to lay his head. The birds of the air have nests and the foxes have holes. But the son of man doesn't have anywhere to lay his head. He came to serve. And he humbled himself and, 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 and served in humility. And he said, I don't even have a place to lay my head, Barbara. Even the birds of the air have a nest. The foxes have holes they can go to. I don't even, the son of man, I came to serve. I don't even have a place to lay my head. That's what Jesus taught. So he had a, a, a great act, a supreme act of, 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 that Christ demonstrated was the act of serving. Serving. He wasn't concerned about himself. He was concerned about others. And the third act that he demonstrated was the act of giving his life for ransom. After Jesus announced in his three years of ministry, public ministry, after he announced that he come to be the savior of the world, in three years they killed him. In three years, after he announced, I come to save you. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I came that, 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 that you will be reconciled back to God. And when he made that public announcement, in three years, they killed him. What a servant. What a servant that he gave. Servant is given to. 
Serving is giving. You, 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 you can't be a, a servant and not a giver. I'm not just talking about finances. It's way more than that. Giving of your time. Giving of your efforts. Giving uh, 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 of your, your, yourself to serve someone else. But see, the world teaches you to serve yourself first. To, to, to make sure that yourself is served. But that's not that. But Jesus opposed that view. He said, you are here to serve others. You, you humble yourself to serve others. That's why he taught his, his disciples. But they had a different view. Like the world has a different view today. The world view is get all you can get for yourself. Yeah. I was had a conversation with somebody the other day. And I said, this generation of people that we have now is the most selfish generation I have ever seen in my life. And this generation is all about me. I'm not just talking about young folks, young and old alike. The time that we live in, it's all about me and what I can get. It used to be a time when you was when you was driving down the highway and you need to exchange another lane that people would stop to let you in. It used to be a day like that. But now that there it can be a line of traffic for miles. They see you trying to get over and they won't even stop to let you in at all. Selfish generation. Very selfish generation. It used to be a time that, if, that you know, that, that, that uh, you could be standing in a line and, and, and people would see the elderly uh, and, and they would give up their space in line or give up their chair for the elderly to sit down or let them go first. Or if they see the elderly in the grocery store, they look back and see that they got a lot of stuff, they'll just let them go. It used to be a time that we lived in that people thought about others. But not anymore. I've seen situations where elderly people were standing and folks were sitting down and just enjoying themselves. Didn't even, didn't even think about letting the person sit down. I remember I was in, I was in Greensboro one, one day and I, I, I went to a, a, a restaurant and, and, and there was this lady that needed some assistance. Her, her battery, she needed a jump on her car and, and, and there was a, a, a vacant parking space beside the lady so so her car and, and it was a gentleman that was coming to give her a jump so he wouldn't get his car so he can pull in that space to give her a jump and then somebody drove up real fast and parked in the parking space and then the man said son can't you see I'm trying to help this lady can you give me the parking space the guy said something ugly and went in and got his food and didn't even try to move the vehicle we didn't used to live in a time like that but we live in a selfish time. There's, this is a selfish world that we live in now. But Jesus opposed that view. That you got to think about others. And he used himself as an example. Jesus said in Matthew 23 and 11, The greatest among you will be your servant. If you want to be great, then you must be a servant. Because in Jesus' view, serving and humbling yourself was greatness which was totally opposite from the world's view of greatness. You know, as I said earlier, we think of greatness as, as others serving us, but greatness is serving others. Many great people that, that, that we read about, and, and people like Martin Luther King and, and different ones, they served others. They didn't think about themselves. They served others. Even it eventually took his life, but he made a commitment to serve others. Uh, that's what serving is about. And that's why Jesus taught his disciples. You know, if you, if you exalt yourself, you taught disciples, you're going to be humble. But if you humble yourself, I will exhort you. I will exhort you. And, 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 and the Apostle Paul, years later, after Jesus' death, encouraged the saints in Philippians. Just go to the book of Philippians if you have your, your word. Look, somebody said, Do you have your word? Your cell phone and, and all this kind of stuff. Do you have it? Whatever you need to pull up the scripture. Philippians, the second chapter, Paul gave an a, a illustration years later of how the saints should em, emulate Christ. In Philippians, the second chapter, verses 3. I start with verse 3. Reading from the NIV verse. Listen, listen to what, what Paul was teaching the disciples. You must, you must emulate Christ in this sermon. Christ was an example. When he kneeled down and, and he washed his disciples' feet, he was, he was demonstrating an example of what serving is all about. Serving is not about me. Serving is always about someone else. We exist to serve others. 
Yes, we take care of ourselves. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself, but we exist to serve others. I'm just a firm believer if you serve others, God will take care of you. If you, if, if you serve others, God will take care of you. But, but, but here, Paul was encouraging the saints. You got to emulate Christ. And in verse 3, he says this. Do nothing, I'm reading for the NIV, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Examine why we do stuff. If I preach out of selfish ambition, then I have missed the mark. If you serve out of selfish ambition, we have missed the mark. He said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, considering others better than yourself. One translation say, esteem others even better than yourself. So now Paul is teaching on the humility of Christ that we are to esteem others even better than ourselves. He always taught it's about other people. It's not about you. When we serve, it's not about us. It's not about getting recognition. It's, it's not about getting any accolades. It's about serving someone else. Making someone else's life just a little bit easier. That's what Jesus was trying to teach. And Paul was, was saying, you got to em em emulate that. He said, he said, don't do things out of selfish ambition, but in humility, consider others even better than yourself. When the last time you considered someone else over you? Think about it. When the last time you put your own life on hold to serve someone else? When the last time you sacrificed something you need for someone else? When was the last time we, when we looked at making sure somebody else's needs were met even before our own needs? That's what Jesus taught. That's what Jesus taught. And it said, esteem others even better than yourself. And then in verse 4, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to what? The interests of others. Look not on your own things, but also on the things of others. See, Jesus always taught it was about other people. You are here to serve other people. And Jesus even, he didn't miss anything in that demonstration. And, and there was a reason why he washed Judah's feet. Because sometimes we have to serve in areas we don't feel comfortable with. We have to serve people that don't necessarily like us or agree with us, but we, see, we serve them anyway. If somebody's hungry, it doesn't make a difference whether they, they are Christian. It doesn't make a difference whether they are Jew. If they're hungry, we are called to serve them. It doesn't make a difference if they're a believer or not. We are called to serve. So we can't choose, as I said last week, who we're going to serve. We can't choose who because Jesus didn't miss anything in that demonstration. He, he washed Judas' feet. How many of you would have been able to wash Judas' feet knowing he was going to betray to the enemy? How many of you would have been able to wash his feet? Be honest about it now. Come on, let's let's die. Well, what's the guy? Uh, the brother on 103. Let's just keep it 100. What did say? Keep it, keep it 100. Keep it 100. How many of you would have washed Jesus' feet? How many? I mean, not Jesus, but Judas' feet. How many? Knowing that he was going to betray you. So Jesus said here, Paul says here in, in the teaching in verse 4, each of you should look not only on your own interests, but on the interests of others. And then it said this in verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Man, that's a challenge. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also what? In Christ. In other words, we, we, got, we got to have the mind of Christ when we serve. Now, that's a challenge within itself. God, help me. I, I have to help God. God, help me to get the mind of Christ to serve like I should serve. Help me, Father. Help me. You're serving, and sometimes you serve, and sometimes people don't even appreciate it when you serve. Amen. They, you serve them and you sacrifice, they still criticize. You, you ever been serving and somebody criticized and didn't appreciate it? How, how, how do you feel when you give somebody money and they just snatch it from you? How, how, how do you feel when, when, when somebody has, has a need and, and they, want, they want food and, 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 you, and you try to buy them food, they cuss you out. I want no food, I want some money. And you try to help them. But we got to continue to serve. We got to continue to serve those who may not necessarily agree with us, but we're still called to serve. And, 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 and Paul said we've got to have the mind of Christ. 
And then it talked about Jesus in verse 6. It said, who being the very nature of God, did not consider uh, equality with God something to be grasped. You know, he was God. He was God in the flesh. And he, he, he was the almighty God, as I said, the great I am. But, but verse 7 said, but he made himself a nothing. Or no reputation, what translation said. He made himself nothing or, 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 or no reputation. He wasn't concerned about his reputation. Jesus wasn't concerned about his reputation. He humbled himself. And the Bible said, taking the very nature of a servant, he came down from heaven, from heaven down to earth, and came in a human body, and he humbled himself, and he served. And the Bible said that he made himself a no reputation. No reputation. He wasn't concerned about, about who was going to recognize him. He was concerned about serving. And verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. But look at what, what the scripture tells us about a servant. Therefore God what, exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that's above what? Every name. Hallelujah. Every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that what? Jesus is Lord. So the lesson is, if we humble ourselves, we will be exalted. The Bible said your gifts will make room for you if you humble yourself. Don't worry about the gift you have and, and don't worry about being up front and serving. But the Bible said your gift will make room for you. If you humble yourself, God will exalt you. You don't have to worry about man exalting you. God will exalt you. Jesus humbled himself and God exalted him and gave him a name that was above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Even the sinner one day must confess out of their mouths that Jesus is Lord. He was highly exalted, but he humbled himself and became a servant. If God can come from heaven down to earth to serve man and to give his life at a ransom for many and to suffer and, and just for us. The Bible said, but, but God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That was serving. In other words, he came to serve us at no cost. Nothing, nothing would stop him from serving us. Not even the pain and the suffering. Man, what a servant. And the Bible says, and Paul says it, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. That we must have the mind of Christ to serve the instruments, play your instruments, serve God with your music. That's serving. You, you, you're enhancing the service and you're blessing people. That's serving. You're serving God in that manner. If you usher, usher to the best of your abilities because you're serving people. Hey man, my wife, I pray for her. She's she's I, I just pray so when I get home, she's doing it, she's doing what I asked her to do, amen. But she's serving. She's serving, she's uncomfortable doing what I asked her to do. But she said, for you, I do it. I had to buy her a couple of meals and, and take her out a couple of times, but she finally agreed to do it. But it came with a cost. I had to pay the price. But she did it. And God would bless her. If you can sing, sing to the glory of God. Whatever God has anointed you to do or call you to do, each of you are anointed to serve. Whatever he has called you to do, do it in humility. And when you do it, think about Christ who put the apron on. And he kneeled down, or the towel, and he kneeled down, and he washed his disciples. It doesn't matter who we are in society. We must humble ourselves. And serve, and serve, and serve, and serve until Christ take us home. We got to be called serving. That's what Jesus did. His disciples finally got it one day. When Jesus was gone, the light came on with those guys. Jesus said, you're not going to get it now. He told them in John 13, you're not going to get it now. But in other words, you will get it. You will understand what I've done for you. And that what I've done to serve you. 
that I gave my life as a ransom. And I humbled myself, came from heaven down to earth. And I exposed myself to all the humiliation and all of the pain just for me and you. Man. And then Paul had a nerve to say, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Look at somebody say, I got a lot of work to do. And God has a lot of work to do in me. But I want to be like Christ. And Jesus served. Like I said, I won't finish this today, but he served. He served. Jesus knew that his time was short. He knew his time was short. And as I said last week, we have a block of time, guys. Jesus said in John 9 and 4, as long as it is dead, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. Ephesians 5 and 16 say, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And in 2 Timothy 1 and 6, Paul encouraged Timothy to, to stir the gifts which is in you. In other words, it's time to serve. It's time to stir up your gifts and use your gifts. You know, God gave you that gift to serve. It's like we're standing on a, a, a food line and God has given us the utensils in our hand. That's our gift to serve people. Why has God given you to serve? Why has he given you to serve people? We've got to take those utensils, those gifts that God has given us and we've got to serve. And we've got to serve because there's a lot to be done. There's a lot that God has, requires of us. What drove Jesus to wash his disciples' feet? Number one, he knew his time was short. Number two, loving his own. The Bible said in John 15 and 13, Greater love have no man than this, than a man that lay down one's life for his friends. No one, no greater love. Serving is motivated by what? Love. And Jesus paid the ultimate price. But he did it, what? Out of love. So when we serve, we got to serve out of love. And we're going to do it like Christ. We can. You ever about to serve you with an attitude? You ever about to give you some money they had an attitude? You don't even want to do it. They, 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 they give you some money they got an attitude. Here, here take this. You, you, you don't even want it. Because of the attitude in which... I'm I, 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 I telling you, I've been in church where the ushers were so mean. Y'all know what I'm talking about? We're not going to have it here. We're going to have it. We're going to have it up in this house. But I've been in church where the ushers were so mean. Amen. And, and, and you're like, wow, you know, this is a house of the Lord. Y'all have experienced that? I'm just serving out of the wrong attitude. But Paul says, let this mind be in you. You got to use Jesus as your example to serve. To serve and, and, and to serve. So he loved his own. That's why he served. Amen. He laid down his life. There's one more scripture I want to give in closing. If you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, we're going to close on that scripture. This is the last scripture. Hey Amen. Those who, who know me, when I say we're going to close, we're going to close, right? Second Timothy 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Last scripture. Jesus loved his own. Listen to what it says here. And we got to love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples by what? The love that we have one for another. What is one way that we demonstrate that love? It's by serving one another. You know how the world is going to know that we are Christians? By the way that we serve one another and love one another because serving flows out of love. So when people see us, they see us serving one another. They see us loving one another. That's how they would know that we are followers of Christ. But in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, last scripture, read this and write it down. Meditate on this for all week long. For Christ's love compelled us, Paul says, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves. Underline that. But for him who died for them and was raised again. The scripture here is telling us that because Christ died for us, that we should no longer live. That's what the scripture says, Bob. Well, that we should no longer live for ourselves, but to live for him that died for us. That's an awesome statement. What is that saying? What that saying is, Lord, you be Lord over my life. Let thy will be done. Thou kingdom come, thy will be done. That's what that scripture is saying. Lord, you be Lord. I don't even live for myself. I've been purchased with a price. I don't even own myself anymore. 
When you got saved, do you know that you don't own yourself anymore? That Jesus has a title deed to your life? You understand what I said? Title, if you have a title for car, that means it's yours, right? Jesus has a title to your life when you gave your life to Christ. Because he paid for it on the cross. So he got a title. When he died on the cross, he took the title of your life in his hands. Oh, man. And then the scripture tells us that we don't even live for ourselves anymore. Because he died for us. Now we got to live for others. That trial you've been going through is for others. That difficult time that you're going through, he allowed you to go through that you can help others. When God takes us through things, it's not for us. We go through it, but it's to serve others. Every experience, every trial, everything that you have encountered since you've been a Christian, God will allow you to go through it so that you may be better equipped to serve others. Look at somebody say, my trial wasn't for me. Look at somebody, I thought it was for me, but it was for somebody else. Come on, let's stand and give God praise. Amen. Let's stand and give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to close in a prayer. Let's just all come to the altar. We're going to close in prayer that way. Let's just come to the altar. We're going to close. Join the hands and we're going to pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just take a moment to just speak to God for one moment about serving and the commitment that you will make to Him. Not to me, but to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this fire be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let, let's just think about, think about it for a moment, what the scriptures were saying to us this morning. And let us make a commitment to God, to God, to serve Him, to serve Him. Hallelujah, to serve Him. Scripture says, Jesus said this while we pray. It's good to pray. He says, when I was hungry, you uh, you fed me. Amen. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you came and you, you, you visited me. Hallelujah. When I was naked, you clothed me. That's what Jesus said. You clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And then the disciples said, how did we give you a drink, Lord? And then Jesus said, if you did it to one of them, you did it to me. So when you serve the homeless, Jesus said, you are serving me. When you clothe somebody, he said, you are clothing me. When you give someone to drink, he said, you have gave me to drink. That's why Jesus said, when you serve, you're serving me. When you're serving people, you're serving me. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you right now, Father God, as we come before your altar right now, God, boldly before the throne of grace. We know, God, that there's more, there's more for us to do. But we pray right now that doors of opportunity of serving will be open to us, to this group that stands before me today, God. You begin to open doors to serve in an awesome way, God. And you begin to open doors for us, God, to serve people. And God, we don't want to do it for recognition, but we do it because you have called us to do it. I pray that each gift that's inside of every individual at this altar in the name of Jesus would be stirred up, as Paul said to Timothy, to stir up the gifts that's within us. Because our gifts are given to us to serve. So whatever utensil you have given to us, God, we take that utensil in our hand and we make a commitment that we're going to serve you with the gifts, with the utensils that you have given us. Hallelujah, God. So we thank you right now, God, for the gifts, the gifts to be revealed, the gifts to be stirred up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And every gift, God, will be revealed and it will be stirred up in every vessel that's here at this altar. And we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that we may be exhorted in due time. God, you will exhort us. We don't exhort ourselves. But we will humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Whatever you want to do, God. Whatever lesson you want us to learn, God. Whatever trial you want us to go through, God. Whatever it is, we realize that it's not for us, God. But it's for someone else to be a better servant, God. To be a better God, a leader, God. So we thank you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Let us help us to serve this community. Open doors for Mexico to serve this community, God. Let us, let us do our part in what you have called us to do, God. Let us join in with others and, 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 and meet and, and address some of the social issues of our society, Father. And God, as we pray and as we serve the 
Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. We come against fear right now. Give us a bonus as the disciples pray for. A bonus to even witness and to share your gospel, God, as we serve you in that battle. Now, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, we thank you. I don't want to take this for granted because there's anybody among us that say, I, I, I don't know Christ. I just want to get to know Christ. I want to be that servant that he has called me to be. I want to be that servant. But in order to be that servant and the servant humility, we got to know him as our personal Savior. we got to know him as our personal Savior to serve. Is any among us that say, I just want, I just want, to, just want to serve my I want Christ in my heart. We're going to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. So we thank you. And I pray blessings and faith upon each of you. I pray God's favor over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, somebody give a praise. Hallelujah. Give a praise. Amen. Because there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. Amen. Amen. You may return back to your seat. Amen. Greet your neighbor. Greet somebody. Amen. And don't leave it up. Hallelujah, don't leave the power of